dealing with someone that you are so in love with, they are your whole life just to be yanked away from you like sure. that. I mean, sure, I never had a girlfriend die, but they pretty much all dumped me, so I kind of <laughs> know what it's like. So it, it, it did to you. I did. They I, already did. I yeah. found a connection point with that. <laughs> I, I suppose, like, like what you're talking about, that connection, I didn't have it with them because this this happens to me, with me in movies like this. Gladiator is like one of my number ones where it's like, where it's all about, oh, the loss of the family and the wife. It's up. They never really show him, so they just seem more like concepts. Hmm. Like, like if they had been, if I got to really see him and his wife together, her, her, you know, her death would have meant more to me. Well, you do more towards the end. Okay, yeah, there is a lot of flashbacks and more yeah, towards the end. I, I of... mean, but but by that point, I'm already kind of disconnected. I, th- I don't have that connection already. I guess the con- the concept of it I connected with already, and I thought that the the performance by Damon showed enough like of that sort of like what are you going to do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the guy's still trying to be a strong, good dad while dealing with this. It was really funny how like all the hot chicks in his town knowing he's, Oh yeah. You know, are, like coming up to him. Hey, no, I thought that was <laughs> hilarious. Like they weren't even waiting. They were, they were straight up vultures. Oh, well, no doubt. They were is, diving on that carcass. Is Scarlett Johansson taking pictures of herself naked in the mirror? You know, here's, here's the thing, co-host Scarlett Johansson, not hot in this movie. No, she's not. Really? She, yeah. she is totally dressed down in a way where if you pass her on the street, like, okay, when I'm in a grocery store shopping, the two women who I see on magazine covers are her and uh, Kim Kardashian, where they stop me every time. I'm just like, yeah. God damn, it's the hottest chick I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and this movie would have walked right by her. Yeah, she, if you, really? if you, if you would have you asked her out, if she said no, you'd be like, all right, fine, whatever. I wouldn't go so Cameron to... Crowe, and that is why you <laughs> fail. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far to call her frumpy, but because she's still Scarlett Johansson underneath the, the bear shit. But, uh, you know, she just looks like she just got off work on a hard fucking, like, a 12-hour day, and she's tired and just wants to go to bed, and she has no interest in your boring ass or the funny shit you have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it just totally is, yeah. yeah it, you could not impress her. I mean, it's, it's not like life. she's not pretty, but... It's not like you look at her and you get that, oh, like most of the time you yeah. see her, you're just kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And then sometimes you get a little look. It's like, oh, it's those yeah. DSLs, those lips. Yeah. All right, all uh, right. Yeah. And then the next scene, you're like, who's that again? Yeah, that usually. Because I'm always waiting for her to like play that role again that she did so, so excellently in uh, Lost in Translation. Right. She's a normal, right. average girl, and she's just cute. Well, she's a normal, average woman. In <laughs> everything that comes with that, and it's not as it's not as cute. Uh, yeah, no. but even so, I like that she got a chance to play a role like this. Sure, I really did because I've always said I thought she was a good actress, and I think she proves it here again, where she is not by any means relying on the fact that she's just outrageously hot mm. that she actually has to hide it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, she actually is a solid actress, and and I believed the relationship between her and, and Matt Damon, which is not as simple as a lot of these movies would normally True. make it. They give it a they give it a lot more level to it and I really appreciated that it wasn't just about that it was the movie's more about watching Matt Damon coming to terms with the <laughs> loss of his wife through this new experience and forming a new type relationship with his son do, do you know what was the name of the last I don't know if it was was the last Cameron Crowe movie but it was one with uh, Kirsten Dunst and uh, Orlando Bloom yeah what the hell almost famous no, no, no. <laughs> but one has to go back to Louisville, and it's all you know, like oh. a lot of Cameron Crowe movies. It's it's autobiographical. Yeah, it is called Elizabeth Town. Elizabeth Town. Yeah, I never saw it. Oh, 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 he did Vanilla Sky in between those. Okay, yeah. uh, but anyway, I don't know. Watching this reminded me of Elizabeth Town, and then it reminded me of Jerry Maguire. It's just like watch this. I was like, wow. I see the Cameron Crow formula now. Yeah, no, and this mm-hmm. is probably, in not having seen Elizabeth Town, this is probably the most formulaic of his movies. I mean, I totally agree with that, but I am kind of a Cameron Crow fan. I don't like all his stuff, but even his weakest stuff, I still always found something to connect with. Yeah. I mean, he makes movies for white people who are who have inner turmoil. <laughs> yeah, he does. He is, it is white people problems. <laughs> the director. Uh, now we have to see them? Yeah. I didn't mind hearing about them. But yeah. As an <laughs> actual no mistake, it wasn't like I looked at this with a racial bit. But no, just no like, I know, I know. But, but it was just kind of like, out. yeah, I've, I've seen you do this mm-hmm. like too many times before. And, and this time, it just feels very cookie cutter. Obviously, me. the studio has the same feeling because they just dumped this shit. Like, I know. Hey, I'm, I'm surprised. They like, kicked this in from the back of the truck. And like, it had really, go. really mixed reviews. I mean, it's like what, like 61% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is still fresh. But, you know, I can see why people – everything you're saying you didn't like about it, I can't disagree with that. You're right. All that stuff is there. Sometimes, though – I want to see an ABC Family special that's well made. I, 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 I and, hear you, and that's what I thought it was. I think it's like an ABC yeah, Family special right. that was a very well made ABC Family special. Okay, fair it's enough. Got all those 
familiar things where there's nothing that's terribly unpredictable in it, but there's lots of animals doing cute things for one, which does indeed make a difference, especially when, well when they're well, not. You just go to a real zoo if you want that. When they're, when they're not having their mouths animated anyway, because oh. I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> Only Babe gets away with that. That's my rule. That's the Babe True. exception. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely right about that. <laughs> that sounds like a born film. But, 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 but like, like, cause there's a scene where like he tells the son, okay, there's a crate out there with full of poisonous snakes. I need you to go close it. Yeah. Just lock it up. Yeah. And the son looks in, goes, oh, shit, snakes. Runs away, leaves it open. Yeah. So next morning, snakes are all over the yard. Uh-huh. And everybody's got to come out there and pick those snakes up. And the son, his, he's like, man, I asked you to do one thing. You couldn't do that? Oh, this sucks. Whatever. He's kicking the snakes and leaving. <laughs> yeah. And even Scarlett Johansson's like, look, I don't have kids, but uh, – you being a punk, letting yeah, that kid yeah. run over you like that. Oh, I don't know shit. what the fuck you're thinking. Yeah, and being a pussy, be a man. And, yeah. and if Beat that little, the shit out of that That kid. little fucker hurts another one of my animals, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to throw him in the snake. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, bravo for you. He's, you know, he's, tell him. he's probably that same kid that, that wrote on his Twitter, fuck you, dad, for not giving me a car and an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> iPhone 4. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson, in a lot of ways, is the mystical, magical Negro of this film. I suppose you so. Know? <laughs> you know, she was the genie. It's just Damn. unfortunate that she never came out of her lamp. <laughs> <laughs> would have liked to have seen that. I know, you know what oh. I'm saying. I mean, like she always constantly has a shirt button all the way to the top, and I'm like one button down, and it would just be like gazunga. Well, it is kind of like <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> don't don't you want to make Ryan Reynolds jealous and sorry that he divorced you? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's with the what's his name? That old fucker now. Who's, oh, Sean Penn who's playing Robert Smith. And his oh, name would be. Oh. Well, you haven't seen that? He's playing some rocker that looks like Robert Smith no. from The Cure with like crazy hair and lots of makeup. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I can hardly wait. <laughs> I'm really excited. That's a different movie. Okay. Yeah, that is a totally different movie than this. Although it would have been a very different movie if Matt Damon had had that look all the way through. I suppose so. Yeah. So like we're um, in a zoo. Well, it sounds like you and I don't like we agree with each other's opinions. Yeah, we we agree. We, we we have an understanding. We haven't yeah. We both see the same things in this film. I just, for me, there are a lot of points of connection sure. to it, like an emotional sense that I was able to go, okay, I didn't like that they did that. That was a cheap out. But the, all these other things I am connecting with. I'm ultimately connecting with these characters, despite the fact that they do some pretty dumb shit sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, ultimately, I give it a matinee. I, I did enjoy it. I was kind of heartwarmed by it. And it did wring some tears out of me. You know, I mean, in a very calculated, we know exactly what we're doing, normally would have irritated the shit out of me way for what whatever reason uh it, it it worked for me so i'm gonna go that fair with it okay and, and it just never did that for me like i said it was too obvious too cookie cutter and even when i wanted to give it a pass you had things like uh john michael higgins you know evil zoo inspector character that was just too much or, or angus mcfaden who the, the the crazy his counterpart yeah who was just so crazy it was just like Man, is this this is just turned out to be slapstick now. It's mm. not even working for me. So for me, it's more of a rental. Yeah, it was like they were trying to cast, put the cast of Pirate Radio yeah. in, in, <laughs> onto the, like, the zookeepers. Like, you know what? You should have gone full freak show with them if you're going to do that. <laughs> Don't just tease it. Let's see the crazy, insane keg party and like that the, they import a bunch of strippers who end up in the fucking lion cage by accident or something. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one problem I had with this movie, though, like really that kept standing out to me was that like even though like the guy, the evil zoo, zoo inspector guy is like, OK, you have to fix these things. This gate's not high enough, all that. Even so, I'm like, they're standing by the lion in, in enclosure and there's like a tiny little concrete ditch and like a three foot fence yeah like three feet high and really it's a fucking lion dude (laughs) the hell is that shit like every animal they're just like even like later with the snakes they're like oh we got all these imported snakes and they're just picking them up and throwing them into bags and like not even being careful at all careful and (laughs) um we got a six-year-old running around yeah yeah. i mean it's like oh yeah i'm a responsible dad with a six-year-old child i'm gonna buy a zoo full of live lions and tigers and poisonous snakes all right now now guys you're making me really interested in this film now (laughs) yeah i'm like oh did I tell Waiting you Kevin James is in it? What? <laughs> no. no. But, but Adam Sandler does his voice. <laughs> ah, up there. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>